let's talk about the spinning gear that you're going to need going on the adventures that I go on. Today, as usual, we're going to cover all the tips, tricks, techniques, all the gear involved, and enjoying the adventures that I go on. And in case you want to too, this is the stuff that you're going to need. Today, we're covering spinning gear, so let's begin. So, spinning gear today, I'm going to say this right up front. I probably catch 60, 70 percent. Generally, he's caught on spinning gear. Been doing it since I was two years old. I really enjoy the technique. Now, you don't need a lot for this, and you're not going to need a lot of money. But it is a good idea to get some fairly good stuff for her. So to begin with, I use a five and a half foot uh, ultralight spinning rod for stream fishing. I keep it nice and short for walking through the bush so that I don't get snagged up all the time. And it's probably the right, right length for doing the casting that I want. Now, as I go into these mountain lakes, I'm going to bring up a six and a half foot length rod so that enables me to get more casting distance out of it. Gives me more leverage, gives me more ability to cast further in a lake, which is really what you want. You're almost casting full blast every time you do that. In the stream, it's more about finesse and accuracy as opposed to range that you want. So right here, you've seen a five and a half foot length rod. Really, it depends on you can spend a lot of money on these, and you can also not spend a lot of money on these. I recommend that you go somewhere in the middle, get something that works pretty good. For me, I, I destroy a lot of rods, depending on the environment that I go through, so I, I like to pick something in the middle of the range. Next up, we've got the reel, and this is the heart and soul of your spinning setup. So on here, let's go over this a little bit. You've got your bale. This bale is what actually allows you to uh, engage the reel, not engage the reel. This is your actual spool in here. And on the spool, we have wound up on there. This is your fishing line. For me, I like to use four pound test. Four pound test means that it's been rated at the factory so that it breaks at four pounds. That also means that the, the lighter your, um, your line has been rated for test, it means the thinner it's gonna get. So we've got a little bit of a give and take here. The lighter your line is, means the farther you can cast it, the more delicate it's going to be. However, the lighter your line is, the more weaker it's going to be. So if you latch onto that big fish, you're going to have to set what's called the drag properly so that it's letting out a lot of line, so you're not putting as much tension on your line so that it's easier to break. Sometimes you might not even be able to catch big fish on my line. It's almost impossible. So you have to have the right size length for the application. You want to be able to have a balance of being able to cast. You want to be able to bring those big fish in that you know are going to be in there. Or if they're just little fish, then you just have light line on there. And you're going to cast them. This particular reel, this is called the Fluger President XT. Wonderful, wonderful reel. I haven't had too many problems with it. As you can see, it's been battle tested. There's parts missing off it. The paint's been chipped but that allows me to give you the right review on it, which I'll get to at a video down the line. Anyways, so this is your drag set up on the top. This allows you to set the tension. If you've got a small fish, you pretty much want to have it tight. If you've got a large fish on there, you're going to want to be able to let that fish take some line out so it protects your line so it doesn't snap. That's also what your rod is doing. It, this is a shock absorber, and you want to have, when you're catching a fish, you want to have your rod tip up, so that your rod is allowed to absorb the shock of that fish coming in. If you just have it straight out like this, with the, all the tension on the line, there's probably a good chance that you might break that line if you got a large fish on there. Okay, hook-wise, this is all I carry for spinning gear. This will probably more than take care of what I need to, to do to catch a ton of fish on any given day, unless it's a certain type of trout that I have a real problem with and we'll get it. you'll see those in the videos later. But this is all I carry is a tiny little box like this and if you need to and if that's all you're doing is spin fishing, wear a nice pair of shorts, get those sneakers that you don't care if you wreck or not, uh, go wade around in the water and have a pocket that's big enough for these and you're good to go for the day. It's a little Plano box, small enough to fit in the pocket and here's what I carry in here. Basically a whole bunch of sizes of different I guess these would be a trapezoidal spoon type hook, deadly dicks, cast masters. I carry a, a variety. Over here, I carry some terminal tackle, 
some extra hooks. Sometimes your hooks lose barbs and I'll carry a replacement. I carry a ton of these things, guys. This is called a snap swivel. Allows it to swivel around, especially if you have a spinner on there. It's gonna allow it to spin freely and not twist your line up. What you do is you tie your line to this side, tie it in a, an improved clinch knot. And then this side is a snap, exactly as the name implies, a snap swivel. This allows you to change your hook out frequently without having to retie knots all day. So basically two things, quick changes and allows you to spin and prevent line twisting, which is bad because you end up birds nesting your, your line down the line, you end up losing a whole bunch of it. So terminal tackle and a whole bunch of trapezoidal spoons. You can see I've got a large selection of those. Might be a little hint, might be a little hint as to what kind of uh, hooks really work well. Let's look at the other side. This is a dual-sided box. Here's another hint at what kind of, of uh, hooks work really well on trout, whether it be rainbow, brook, browns, cutthroats, all work really well. First up, we've got what are called Len Thompsons, various different uh, design patterns in there. Uh, we've got MEP spinners, which are my personal favorite of all time. If I was probably to choose one hook, ever and it doesn't even matter on the type of fish whether it be pike whether it be trout they work for everything so i've carried various different sizes of these in various different colors and then over here sometimes even the meps don't work i'm going to carry a selection of panther martins arctic foxes of various different shades and colors and some larger spoons over here sometimes you never know that you might have some big fish in there and they might not be a biting on the smaller hooks sometimes you have to size up and go with a really big hook and then that's when you're going to get that fish not refusing your hook and actually taking it so in terms of spinning gear that's about it it's real simple you don't have to spend a lot of money and you're going to catch a lot of fish if you're doing it right all right so till the next time take care